Hey everybody, Connor here today at eTrailer.com. We're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the eTrailer.com trailer hitch receiver here for our 2020 Jeep Wrangler. So here is what our trailer hitch is going to look like installed on our Jeep. As we can see here, it has a pretty hidden design. We're not going to see some bulky cross tube hanging down below our bumper. We're also going to have this really nice matte finish, which all e-trailer hitches come with. And the reason for this is, number one, it helps hide nicks and scratches better. And number two, it helps blend in more with the vehicle and our bumper here. So it's not going to stand out nearly as much as some of the other trailer hitch options, which have a much shinier powder coated finish. Our trailer hitch here is going to allow us to do pretty much anything we want with our Jeep. If we want to hit the trails, we're going to be able to attach a bike rack. Or if we want to free up some space inside the vehicle, we're going to have plenty of cargo carrier options to choose from because we have the larger two inch receiver tube opening with class three rating. If we want to tow a trailer, we're certainly going to be able to do that as well. This particular hitch here has a 3,500 pound gross trailer weight rating, which is the amount we can pull outward on the receiver tube. It's also going to have a 350 pound ton weight rating, which is going to be the downward force on the receiver tube. Now, if you are towing a trailer, you may be interested in a weight distribution system. These are going to be a really helpful tool while we are towing. So I definitely recommend you check out our selection here at eTrailer. If you are using one of these systems, the capacity of our trailer hitch is actually going to increase to 4,000 pounds for the gross trailer weight rating and 400 pounds for the tongue weight rating. So keep in mind, our trailer hitch and vehicle are tested separately in regards to weight capacities. So whichever is lower is the capacity we're gonna to need to abide by. So if we take a look at the side of our receiver tube opening, we're gonna have the standard 5 8 inch diameter hitch pin hole, which is gonna accept our 5 8 inch diameter hitch pin and clip. Keep in mind, these are gonna be sold separately here through eTrailer. These are gonna be used for holding our ball mounts, bike racks, and cargo carriers in place. Something else about these Jeep style hitches is they have these rather large safety chain tabs, which are gonna easily accept our larger Clevis style hooks, as well as our smaller S-type hooks. So now we have a couple measurements here for you. They're gonna help you when you're selecting your hitch mounted accessories, such as a ball mount, bike rack, or cargo carrier. The first measurement we have is the distance from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening. That's going to be about 18 and a quarter inches. That measurement will be useful for selecting our ball mount so we can ensure we get the correct rise and drop to tow our trailer level. And the next measurement we have here for you is going to be the distance from the center of the hitch pin hole to the outside edge of our spare tire. Keep in mind, this is with the factory tire size. So if you have some aftermarket tires, this measurement could obviously vary. But our particular measurement here is going to be eight inches. This will be useful when we're selecting our accessories, such as a bike rack or cargo carrier. That way we can ensure that there's not going to be any interference with our spare tire, either in the in use position or the stowed position. So in regards to installation, this is definitely going to be one of the easier ones to do by yourself at home. You don't need any special tools and you really don't need to have any mechanical knowledge to be able to know how to do this. So I definitely encourage you guys to try this yourself. Now let's go ahead and jump into that installation so we can show you how it's done. So the first step of our installation here, our instructions actually call for lowering our muffler here. But after installing several of these, I've actually determined that that's not going to be necessary. If you want to do so to give yourself a little bit more room to work, that's perfectly fine. There's going to be two metal hangers, one on either side, that are attached inside the rubber isolator. We'd simply want to pry the metal hanger from the rubber isolator to lower our muffler. So since we're not going to be lowering our exhaust here, we can go ahead and set our trailer hitch up into position. Before we do this, we're going to take a look at the cross beam which our trailer hitch is going to attach to, it's going to be located directly behind our bumper. Then if we turn our attention to the front of this cross beam, you're going to see four pre-drilled holes here, which is what our trailer hitch is going to use to attach to it. 
So let's go ahead and set it up into position now. Before we set our hitch into position, we're just gonna go ahead and take two of our half inch bolts here, along with two of our flat washers, and just slide these over the bolts like so. And then we can go ahead and set our hitch up into position. We're actually gonna be installing the bolt heads from the rear of the hitch. We'll show you that now. So I do want to make a note that some of our bolts aren't actually going to be able to push all the way through, but as long as we just thread them slightly by turning the bolt, we should see the bolt start to protrude through the cross tube and out the front of the trailer hitch. Just like that. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our remaining two fasteners. Now that we have all our bolts in place, we can go ahead, take our flange nuts here, and install those over the bolts. Now we'll take our torque wrench here, along with our 19 millimeter socket and 19 millimeter wrench. We go ahead and torque down all of our fasteners to the amount specified in our instructions. And there we go. Now we can go ahead and repeat that on all of our fasteners. Keep in mind, we have flange nuts at the front here, so you really only need to hold the wrench to get it started. But once it's snug up against the trailer hitch, it should hold itself. And that's gonna do it today for our look and installation of the eTrailer.com trailer hitch receiver here on our 2020 Jeep Wrangler.